So the reason why I sound like this is because I'm currently recovering from influenza A. <laughs> If you see my last video, Bruh. I know what you're thinking. The universe does not want me winning. There's so many obstacles on my hero's journey. God damn. <coughs> anyway, I'm on the road to recovery, but this was the sickest I've ever been. Literally worst pain I've experienced in my whole life. <coughs> it was so bad that the day before yesterday, I had to go to the ER. My throat was on fire and it was like I was swallowing knives, which I learned at the ER was because I developed ulcers in my throat. It hurt so bad I could barely sleep or eat or drink. <laughs> like every time I swallowed or coughed, I would uh, scream and cry. My head constantly felt like it was about to explode. I had hella body aches, especially my lower back. I was constantly oscillating between freezing cold and burning hot to the point where I would soak through my clothes with sweat. Like even my legs were sweating. And I'm just like not that kind of girl who has sweat glands on her legs. That's just like not me. It's not who I am. And my heart was racing. She was Sha'Carri Richardson on the track. My normal resting heart rate is around 50 beats per minute. But on the day I went to the ER, the whole day it was around 120. I could feel it in my chest like, Ugh. I also like <coughs> could not breathe or move or talk and I always felt like I was gonna throw up and I also lost my sense of taste. But talking was so painful that in the ER, I could not speak to the doctors. I had to write down what I wanted to say on my phone. And my boyfriend was sitting next to me the whole time. I was in the ER for like six hours and he was sitting next to me, but I could not speak to him because it just hurt so bad and he couldn't hear me when I tried to talk. So I was texting him when he was next to me. <laughs> Screenager AF! But I'm feeling relatively better today, all things considered. And I'm on hella pain meds and I'm bored. So I thought I would try and film a, a silly little sketchbook tour for you all. Okay, so I started and completed this sketchbook this past summer, which is very momentous for me because I am usually not a sketchbook completer. Okay, I kind of cheated because not all of it is actually drawing. It's like part sketchbook, part scrapbook, part journal, but that's okay. We fill it however we can. To start off strong, we have some corny ass shit I wrote. Sometimes the hardest part is just starting the damn sketchbook because you don't want to ruin it, but fuck it. Now we begin. That's my boyfriend. That's my friend Simone. <coughs> I tried. Two, I was on the Amtrak when I drew this, and um, the train is very much not conducive to drawing. It's like, tried very hard for an hour to draw on the Amtrak, but it go bump bump and I am dizzy so I have given up. And the markers from this side transferred to that side, so it looks a little silly, but that's okay. This is my little guy, Duckworth, which my boyfriend gave me for my birthday, named after Kendrick Lamar. Here are some quickie five minute figure drawings I did on the train. I would highly recommend the website lineofaction.com. They populate like these free figure models. <coughs> oh, that's disgusting. As I was saying, it's really good practice for figure drawing. <laughs> and then here's my first real like scrapbook page. So I was like traveling around, some receipts. Um, I saw, in advance of a broken arm, the Duchamp ready-made. So I wrote, world's most bougie shovel. And then I got my ears pierced, and as always, they got hella infected, as per usual. And now we're chilling. And then I got my passport renewed, so I had to get a new photo. Oh, and for this one, I took a blue Copic marker, and then I scribbled for the background to kind of tone the page. And then I used a... Uh, blue color pencil and a white color pencil and a white gel pen for the highlights. Here I was on the beach with my friends and I drew her Birkenstocks and I love seaweed, it is so cool. This is a true fact. Seaweed is awesome and miraculous and beautiful and delicious. Here are some rocks. Um, I am drawing a pile of rocks while sitting at the beach at sunset with Mimi, listening to the rhythmic exhales of the ocean, and everything is just so beautiful, and wow, I am just so grateful. And then, what did I write here? 
It brings me a strange amount of joy that I get to use my markers E33 sand and E15 dark suntan in a place that makes sense. Long time no beach. This is burnt sienna. <laughs> what was I on? <laughs> oh, and here's a dead fish. Oh my fucking gosh, you fucking dead. This I encountered at the beach as well. Beach dog. This was someone's dog, but I never finished it. Um, oh yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is where the extra jank comes in. Like, I swear, I think half of this sketchbook, let's see, where to where? Here, here to here. This entire part of the sketchbook, um, <laughs> my friend and I, we uh, did a little acid and then we made some collaborative art. So, <laughs> I'll show you some of the highlights. 11 a.m. is when the silly stamps commence. It was a good time. So I sketched this house. We were on the beach at first, 11.14 a.m. Um, and we were listening to this podcast with Jane Goodall. And she said something about the interconnectedness in this tapestry of life. And I was like, whoa, that's so profound. And I was drawing these swirls. And then I wrote, I miss dance, I miss gymnastics. I miss feeling like I had the desire, ability, right to make art with my body. Space as blank canvas, beckoning. Its arms have always been open to you. Just remember. It's 12.37. I tried to mark the timestamps so I could like come back and trace my mental deterioration because it gets progressively more silly. This is when I was still like able to think coherently somewhat. <laughs> Okay, this is hard to read, but it says, feeling so aware of my body, but in a good way. Wow, thank you, left middle toe. Unappreciated for real. You, you deserve attention and gratitude and care. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I am starting to understand what it is to be embodied. <laughs> I feel like as someone who has been showing my art to the world for a long time and has been very concerned about like making things look pretty. This was genuinely so liberating and I felt like I was like able to just create and make marks because it felt good to my body in the moment without having to think about the outcome and that was so freeing. So not saying that everyone should <laughs> do psychedelics but like <laughs> YouTube don't demonetize me. This feels good. I am allowed. Thank you for the hug. I love you. We know. Thank you to the coloring page outlines, the little things that hold us. We all just need to be held. <laughs> A lot of these drawings were like based on the conversations my friend and I were having in the moment, so they probably like do not make sense. They definitely don't make sense to anyone else. Like this is great flavor. Oh, worm. Reworm yourself, snail. <laughs> <laughs> Our can be so expansive, sharing, but also so possessive, not yours. This is this little worm guy with a top hat. <laughs> and we were talking about, like, in the Mickey Mouse universe, like, is Pluto a dog? And then would that make Goofy a furry? And then here's like the evolution from Pluto to Goofy. <laughs> Final boss top dog is dog? Thanks, Darwin. We did it. <laughs> I think one of us said something about how we were in our right mind, so it's in my left mind. Stinky but sideways, don't know what that means. Here's a little seal, so art, art, strong, shorty, shoddy, spork. Word association, I can't. Cunt, cunt. I love etymology. Entomology, and then some bugs. Seahorse, seahorse. And then drew this little male seahorse giving birth. So much baby. And then there's a little baby. Peanut baby. Uh, let the cicadas live. And then here are some like, uh, limbs and titties and feet, etc. Built different. Eye out for Selena. Birth. Oh, there's like a little birth situation going on over there. <laughs> I don't know what is going on. <laughs> Talking about society and then so I saw teat. Society. 
so sad. Uh, these nuts. I don't know if this is entertaining to anyone else. <laughs> because like in my head, I remember what was going on. So it like makes sense to me. But I'm sure anyone else is just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we shoe this guy a little Nike shoe, so we have just do it, drip or drown. And this guy's speeding, so he's going new. Oh, and then this is our sacred cow, not for slaughter. Um, she will not be consumed, even though there's a USDA sticker on her. Then she has some little little drippings. Alexa, electrify the squirts, please. Thanks. Here's our squid. She was giving Kylie AF. Yes, pink, purr. Here's some fish and seaweed that turned into a bunch of legs. And then we have silly little dino in space with some bugs. And all this was collaborative. So my friend and I would like be drawing at the same time and like draw over each other's things. And it was so fun. It was so much fun. Movement is the end in itself. Move because it feels good, not towards something. No direction. Here are a bunch of little guys. And a foot, and they each have little souls, little hearts and stars inside them. Oh, and this is the final one. It is 4 p.m. Wow, holy shit. This was actually so wild because we were on the floor drawing for like three hours straight and it felt like five minutes. It was crazy. So that was the end of the little acid trip. And I was on the beach again and then drawing the little fractal patterns that the waves carve into the sand. There's so much abundance in life, worlds within worlds. The ocean carves trees into the sand, erodes stone into driftwood. Everything is alive and connected and glimmering and, and, and. I explore the depths of the universe as I watch a snail crawl, glide, soar. This is enough. Oh, that was a reference to when I was tripping balls and there was, we were outside and there was a snail on this little pebble and I like watched it and stared at it for like 20 minutes and it was like the greatest thing I've ever seen. I was like, wow. <laughs> okay, and then this on attention. Here are some quotes I collected on attention that I really liked. Attention is the beginning of devotion. Attention without feeling is only report. You need empathy, Mary Oliver. Attention is that doorway to gratitude, the doorway to wonder, the doorway to reciprocity. Robin Wall Kimmerer. Attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity, Simone Weil. What happens when we turn attention into a common thing? When we start to see each other more carefully and more thoroughly? Ocean Wong. Here are some patterns inspired by shapes and creatures that I found at the tide pools. Here's my friend's hand with another little hand guy attached. This is also a marker base with colored pencil on top. I found that I really liked <coughs> marker sketching and then putting colored pencil on top because it allows you to kind of be like loose and gestural and then and then to go in with more precision on top. Some scrapbooking. Here is some dead crab and crab limbs that I encountered on the beach. This is toned paper that I ripped out and then pasted into my sketchbook and then marker and color pencil. Graphite sketch I did of a butterfly. Here's a little Krista Tippett quote. Hope is a muscle, a practice, a choice that actually propels new realities into being. And it's a muscle we can strengthen. This isn't about optimism. It's not about wishful thinking. It's about insisting that we can be agents of change. That what is doesn't have to be. Random color test. And at this point, it basically just turns purely into a scrapbook. So that's it. Sorry that I'm in like peak musty state of existence. sorry that my sketchbook is like pure wackery but i hope you were entertained <laughs> and i hope you have a beautiful wonderful incredible rest of your day